Dr. Drew could lose his license to practice medicine for diagnosing Britney Spears with a brain disorder in TMZ's documentary. My fiance has a multitude of conditions. These are all what we call garbage bag diagnoses. When you can't think of anything else, you go, ah, oh, it's that. And then that makes me wonder what she's abused for. Basically, celebrity rehab goes against um, pretty much everything that any medical professional uh, would do for someone who was in a serious state of addiction. And the amount of them that have passed away since. Um, we've got China Doll, Mindy McCready, Kanicki, Joey Kovar, Rodney King. Dr. Drew is far from a reliable doctor. He has built a career off of exploiting sick people, bringing drug addicted celebrities to television to embarrass them. He's also provided really bad advice and he has used his license in illegal ways. Dr. Drew is a doctor I wouldn't trust. So let's get into it. Now, I understand why people like Dr. Drew. He seems friendly, he seems empathetic, he also seems like he knows what he's talking about because he is Dr. Drew. But he's had a long career in entertainment and throughout his career, he's had some very controversial moments. So we're going to unpack those today. Starting with celebrity rehab, because this is why Dr. Drew is a household name. He had a reality show where he brought in these celebrities who were sick, they were vulnerable, and he put them on our team. TV screens watching them unpack their conditions. Now, I think a lot of people like Dr. Drew because they think he's doing something good. But in this situation, it seems like it's just a show with producers exploiting very vulnerable people for good television. There's no doubt in my mind that they weren't getting everything they needed as a sick individual in that home while being filmed all the time. But he began hosting this show back in 2008 on VH1. The reality show focused on famous people trying to tackle drug abuse that was taking a toll on their lives. However, after leaving the series, several stars died, some sadly because of continued addiction. Season one of Celebrity Rehab, Daniel Baldwin questioned Jeff Conaway's desire to get sober. Do you want to get sober? And your answer was, you didn't know. That really scared me. Now, it's not like one or two people have died after this show, which I I mean, I get it, they are drug addicts, that's what the show is about, so it kind of makes sense. Not that we want anyone to die, I mean, they are there seeking, like, help, professional help, shouldn't they be getting better, but eight people have died under Dr. Drew's watch. Jeff Conaway was a celebrated star in the 70s and 80s, known for playing Bobby Wheeler in ABC's Taxi, but he left the show Taxi after three seasons due to heavy drug addiction. In 2008, he joined the show, hosted by Dr. Drew, to find a solution to his addiction. Unfortunately, he ended up having an incident where he fell down the stairs in 2010, he had to have some surgeries, and he got onto some painkillers, which kind of reawakened his issues with addiction. Now, China, whose real name was Joni Lore, was a female wrestler in the 90s and 2000s. She was very popular on TV, and in 2008, she ended up going on Dr. Drew's show to work on her addiction. She did not get the help she needed because she later died in 2016 due to an overdose. Granted, it was some time after, but it really, that experience didn't really do her justice. It didn't help her in the long run. Uh, I too am a fellow addiction specialist. So um, basically celebrity rehab goes against um, pretty much everything that any medical professional uh, would do for someone who was in a serious state of addiction. You're taking an already really stressful situation, the worst time in their life, literally the worst time in their life. If you look at die um and you're gonna shove a camera in their face and promise them help because a lot of the people on that show it seemed like yeah they probably wanted to clout chase a little bit i'm not even gonna say that but they were in a very altered mental state whereas dr drew knew what he, what he was doing and the amount of them that have passed away since now because of these deaths a lot of people have looked at dr drew and said wait why are people going on your program and then dying after mindy opened up to dr drew about her issues with substance abuse and mental health issues she had been a patient on his show but Dr. Drew said in a statement, unfortunately, it seems that Mandy did not sustain her treatment. And that's ultimately because she kept going back and forth between drugs and then ultimately took her own life. A TV producer, Danny Zucker, who produced Modern
Modern Family actually tweeted and called out Dr. Drew saying like, why are all these people dying after going on your show? Like if anyone died going on Survivor, uh, there'd be issues. But then Dr. Drew, he's like killing them off. Dr. Drew defended himself until he couldn't any longer. And then he gave up. In 2012, he decided to end the series. According to The Hollywood Reporter, he grew tired of taking the blame for the deaths he was not responsible for. Critics had come after him, accusing him of exploiting troubled stars for personal gain. Dr. Drew says that he does not exploit people, saying in some cases he saves their lives. He says, you may tune in for the train wreck, but what we're giving you is recovery. We're doing a bait and switch. As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why people like Dr. Drew is because he's supposed to have all the answers, but he's given some bad advice over the years. In 2010, when he was asked for his parenting opinion in the case of Lindsay Lohan, which I've got a big video about her coming out, it may be out already, but he said, if she were my daughter, I would pack her car full with illegal substances, send her on her way, call the police and make sure she was arrested. I would make sure she was not allowed to get out of jail. Ooh, this article also calls him out. Ironically, for the man with the iron fist, only this year, his own daughter, 22 year old Paulina, revealed that she had been suffering from bulimia for seven years, right under the nose of her father, who is trained in the field of eating disorders. Hmm. So maybe you shouldn't take parenting advice from someone who's not parenting like, you know, perfectly, which I don't expect him to be a perfect parent, but you know, it's not a great look. When it came to Lindsay, Dr. Drew says that it's highly unlikely that she'll ever recognize she has a problem and go to rehab on her own. Why is he talking about this young woman like this? I believe that Lindsay will make a wonderful sober person someday if she survives this. I absolutely wish her no harm, but I have a feeling that something awful is gonna happen to her, like she's going to lose a limb. And that's not the first time he's came for a young celebrity and tried to use his background, his education, to fix a problem. When he spoke about Britney Spears, a lot of people were wishing that he would lose his license. In a TMZ documentary, Britney Spears, The Price of Freedom, Dr. Drew said that Britney had a mental, like, brain disorder, even though he's never treated her once ever before. He said, look at the woman there, the suffering she's going through, the isolation, then also look at her for what she is and try to keep in mind she's a brilliant performer. She's trying to manage her life and it's a lot for her and her illness, which, okay, I mean, we've learned a lot about Britney, but like, I mean, he doesn't have any special like ability to diagnose her with a brain disorder. Dr. Drew messed up with this one because Britney's team had taken further action, filing a complaint against Dr. Dr. Drew and sharing a letter addressed to him on Twitter with the caption that Dr. Drew could face potential consequences, including the possibility of losing his medical license. And it's all for diagnosing Britney with a brain disorder on national television without having treated her. Dr. Drew could lose his license to practice medicine for diagnosing Britney Spears with a brain disorder in TMZ's bullshit documentary without ever even meeting her. And it actually violates a clear violation of the Goldwater Rule. Goldwater Rule is a statement of ethics first issued by the American Psychiatric Association in 1973, restraining psychiatrists from speculating about the mental state of public figures. The rule enjoins psychiatrists from professionally diagnosing someone they have not personally evaluated. The APA's Ethics Committee affirmed and even expanded the rule beyond diagnoses to cover almost all psychiatric opinion in 2017. Good for her lawyer going out here and defending her. The diagnosis of brain damage without evaluation of a patient goes against the expected professional conduct held up by the medical board. Such behavior not only undermines the integrity of Dr. True, but also casts the doubt of credibility of the entire profession. I totally agree. The letter reads, we are writing to file a complaint against Dr. Drew Pinsky, who is currently licensed by the Medical Board of California for violating the Goldwater Rule. On May 15, 2023, Dr. Drew appeared on national television broadcast TMZ Investigates the Price of Freedom and claimed that Britney Spears is suffering from a biological brain disorder that requires medication, despite the fact that he has never treated or evaluated her. Of course, if Dr. Drew had actually ever treated Britney Spears, this would then have constituted a violation of her patient confidentiality. Thank God there are these protections for people like Britney Spears because he may say he's not exploiting people, but like you're over here doing a TMZ documentary, which has completely exploited Britney. And you're like uh, saying that she has a disorder using your title as doctor to justify your reasoning. 
again, without ever seeing her. Like, you don't know. You don't know her situation. What? You looked at her Instagram feed and you decided that? Now, if Dr. Drew got in trouble for this, he could lose his license for a minimum of five years which I don't know if he could still do like his, you know, Dr. Drew thing if he doesn't have his license. One person wrote, in my opinion, Dr. Drew has a long history of exploiting celebrities with addiction and a slew of other scandals. How he still has a license to practice after COVID is beyond egregious. Now, Dr. Drew hasn't just given bad advice to celebrities and tried to diagnose them. He's also given bad health advice and he has bad takes sometimes. Part of me wants to give him a break because he does produce a lot of content, so he slips up sometimes, but he called a pelvic disorder a garbage bag diagnosis um, and implied that like this, like whatever this issue is with the pelvic health that he's talking about on his radio show could be a sign of like sexual abuse when that's not proven. The caller told Dr. Drew that his fiance has been diagnosed with several disorders, including this intestinal bladder problem. It seems like she has issues with her private parts. While it's not clear exactly what the caller's question was, Dr. Drew swooped right in with an answer. My fiance has a multitude of conditions. She has IC, endometriosis, lactose intolerance, she has no stomach lining. Uh, I mean, a, a bunch of things no going on. No stomach lining? Her. Is that yeah, like, uh, real, Drew? Can that happen? No. Okay. And by the I see is, I assume, interstitial cystitis? Yes, yes. Okay. These are, all, these are all sort of what we call functional disorders. Everything you mentioned, everything you mentioned are things that actually aren't discernibly pathological. They're just sort of there's what we call garbage bag diagnoses. When you can't think of anything else, you go, ah, oh, it's that. So it then makes me question why is she so somatically preoccupied that she's visiting doctors all the time with pains and urinary symptoms and pelvic symptoms, all this stuff. And then that makes me wonder was she abused growing up. This disease that Dr. Drew is speaking on affects the tissue lining of the uterus and it could cause pain in the pelvis and make it hard to get pregnant. About 176 million women suffer with this. So it's very real, very serious, yet Dr. Drew was trying to make light of it and his choice of words were poor. In response to the negative backlash, Dr. Drew offered an apology, saying that he told his listeners that he didn't mean at all to just call this diagnosis garbage, just that in this case in particular with this caller, it sounded like the doctors were searching for an explanation for her pain. Just Really like saying like, oh, no, no, you know, it's not a garbage case for everyone. It's just this guy in particular. Now, when COVID happened, all the media were calling the doctors, all the TV doctors to give their opinions. And Dr. Drews landed him in trouble. And that's because he pretty much played it down, which led to a lot of backlash. A lot of people sending him death threats and telling him that he was wrong because he was trying to explain that COVID was not that serious. And at this point in time, we didn't really understand COVID as a whole. So people thought he was being very dismissive. Uh, it's way less virulent than the flu, so it's a reminder that you're more likely to die of influenza, so go ahead and get your flu shots. Mild, doesn't hurt anybody. That should be the headline. Way less serious than influenza. That's the headline. You know what the 2% lethality thing is you have there? Are you talking about the coronavirus thing? It's less than 2%. It's like 0.02%. It is less dangerous than influenza. Less dangerous than influenza. Um, your probability of dying of coronavirus much higher being hit by an asteroid, I would say. This corona thing doesn't worry me it is, at all. It is a press-induced panic. I am angry about <clears throat> it. It is the flu. If you're under 65 and you get it, you're going to have the flu and you're going to be fine. That montage is crazy, but what is going on with his face here? I mean, that caught me off guard. When this montage went viral, Dr. Drew had to address it. And while the clips he acknowledged were not edited, he wanted to apologize that he was trying to, I guess, like follow the advice of like Dr. Fauci, which really that did not help his case. Now I wanna get to Teen Mom because celebrity rehab was a big part of his career, but Teen Mom has also been a huge part of his stardom. Getting these vulnerable people hmm sounds pretty familiar these vulnerable teen moms on this show and showing how difficult it is to raise a kid he has been the teen mom cast unofficial therapist for years but some of the cast members are calling for him to get fired just to briefly go through a list of what dr drew has done on this show for one he has made insensitive comments and behavior towards the participants such as checking a participant's pupils with his cell phone flashlight to see if they're still on drugs secondly 
he pushes these participants to reconcile with their ex-partners, which was uncomfortable for the participants. He's made controversial statements about parenting and their relationships, such as arguing about the term babysitting when a father takes care of his own kids. He's antagonized cast members during the reunions, leading to shock and disgust among the audience. He's also engaged in behavior that has led to the creation of a petition to have him fired from hosting the reunion shows. And he's also been accused of poking at sensitive topics and relationships, which has led to explosive arguments and participants storming off set. Now let's talk about Ashley, because she's the main participant who wants Dr. Drew gone. She said, I think Dr. Drew brings nothing to the table in regards to helping them. A new doctor, Dr. B, was on the scene, and she said that he needs to replace Dr. Drew because he's actually helpful. Ashley shared a still from the Teen Mom family reunion, which showed her and Dr. Bryant holding hands. She captioned the post, I'd like to officially request Dr. B for all future reunions. She went on to say that Dr. Drew is a disgrace for instigating little girl drama on these reunion shows. Ashley said that she has no beef with any other castmates besides Dr. Drew, saying Dr. Drew messy ass needs to drop the doctor from his name and just call himself Wendy Williams because he's a disgrace. She went on to say that point blank, he needs to go and try to really rehabilitate people instead of starting drama between girls who are young enough to be his granddaughters. Effing disgusting. So guys, let's, let's leave it here. We don't need to tear each other Because down. everyone's on the internet tearing us. All right, well, I'm going to go everybody. out. Thank you all for being here. Everybody we appreciate them being here. Clearly, this is not going to resolve. Young and Pregnant returns Tuesday, January 7th. We'll be right back. Can you not think you're petty as for talking about my kids? You can talk that so far. Oh no, I mean, even at that age, Dr. Drew, do you want to be around that kind of energy? It's giving very much like Zeus Network, fighting, I don't like it. Does it seem healing? And an OG teen mom star actually said that Dr. Drew is so annoying, she cannot stand him. Dr. Drew is always causing problems. He cares one day out of the year, and that's because he gets his paycheck. She says, I put Dr. Drew in his place because what they didn't show is that in one scene of their take, he was talking about Suboxone and Methadone, which help you get over drugs drug addictions. And then in the next scene, he did a complete 360 and said, it will kill you if you're going to support something by all means support it, but do not flip flop. So she's calling him a hypocrite. She even accuses him of faking his empathy, that he truly doesn't care about these people. She said, one of the reasons I blasted Dr. Drew is because he started fake crying when he was talking to Larry, her partner. She says he only did that because he didn't know what to say. He was going to say, I feel your pain, Larry, but you could just see him faking the tears. Now, fair Abraham him, a big teen mom star who is very interesting also says that Dr. Drew needs to lose his job. Looks like he's the problem, but he was asked which teen mom cast members he would strangle, which if someone asked me that, like I would never, I, no one, I don't, I mean, I would never strangle anyone. So, I mean, do you want to rephrase it and say maybe someone I do not like, but he said, Farah. Farah said, I just don't believe in joking about violence anymore, which I totally get it. She says that made me not be able to look up to him as a professional as much as I did or look up to him as much as I did. That's just where I I feel about that. Farah actually told Radar that she won't be around Dr. Drew anytime soon, saying that she will not be around him due to her health and her safety due to his violent strangle comment, which he didn't say he would strangle her. He was asked, which one would you like? I mean, she's dramatizing it, but like it is like, I mean, I don't like the comment either. I wouldn't want to be around him. There's something wrong about entertainment doctors. Would you agree? I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.